three anime triangles to add to your game. Start on the bottom. This is usually where I use triangle the most. And the first one is gonna come off of his downward pressure. Okay, this is also what I usually use triangle to attack. Okay, is the person trying to hold me down. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get my hands on the inside. I bridge into them, I thread my hands under, and now I pull my knees into my chest and I deflect the arms out. Now I'm gonna threaten a stalling stand up. Okay, so I'm gonna overhook, elbow deep grip, overhook his arm, elbow deep grip. Okay, and then take my head and I'm gonna tuck it beside his ear. And then I'm gonna turn it this way, because he can't hit the back of my head. He's not allowed, right? So if I'm like this, he might be able to hit my ear or something. So I'm gonna turn my head away, and I put his head in between my head and his hand. So he has very few targets here. Now, if we see the other side of this, this guy's gonna wanna start punching me. When he starts punching me, he has this target. Okay, he can only hit me in the rib. That's the only shot he really has, so I can predict he's gonna throw it. It also doesn't really hurt that much. So he's attacking, boom, boom, boom. I time it and I catch in between my forearm grip and my shin, boom, like that. And now I'm gonna start getting into my clamp guard. So I'm gonna push out with that knee and start extending my hips out, like so. Now my, my hand is gonna go down his arm Okay, travel down his arm and find the wrist. I'm gonna roll towards this shoulder and this leg is gonna come up and crunch down on the back of that shoulder. And now my heel is gonna connect to my knee. I'm grabbing the head to give him uh, an, an idea to keep his head down. Both my arm and my leg, my arm and my leg, are both trying to keep his head down. Both my hands are pulling towards as well, pulling towards and both my legs and my hip or driving away, so I'm creating that tension. Now this top knee, or top heel, sorry, is pulling down, like so, on the top part of his shoulder. Pulling down, and now I'm gonna lift my other leg out. Don't go to your back while doing this. You can see I'm still on my shoulder, not my back. Now this leg is gonna go over his, his neck like this. I'm lifting my hips up, trying to get the back of the knee on the back of the neck, and I'm gonna catch my own shin. And now here, I'm gonna lock nice and tight over my shin. Shin's going behind this knee, not the foot going behind the knee, okay? The shin going behind the knee like so. Boom. And now I'm just gonna push his head down a little bit and shoulder walk out. Boom, boom, boom. This increases the power of my choke and I'm gonna go to the side. I wanna anchor myself to this arm or this leg. That way it's hard for him to pick me up and slam me. Okay, so I go under to that arm. Now I'm gonna put two hands on the shin. You could also go one on the shin and one on his head. I'm just kind of letting him out here so that he doesn't die on me. So I lock here, I can finish, boom. Or I can lock here and finish, boom. Last little detail on that finish is I wanna make sure my shins are pointing the same way. Okay, I'm aligning my shins so they're parallel in a straight line. I don't want a perpendicular crisscross on my triangle. It's just not gonna contact his shoulder in the same manner. This really, that torquing action with this far leg really puts a lot of pressure on, his, on this shoulder, which will drive into his carotid artery, okay? Finish there. Holding me down. I bring him close. I lock him down. He's gonna start punching my rib. Bang, bang, I can feel it, I can time it. Boom, and catch. And now I'm extending that leg, extending my hip, getting him away, grabbing the wrist, grabbing the head, bringing my leg up, crunching down on that shoulder. Okay, crunch down and then boom, lock heel to the knee. Okay, I pull that bottom leg out, throw it over his back, boom, head, into the basement, shoulder walk him down, and now angle, Whoosh. grab and finish. Bye bye. Number two, okay, I'm gonna push the head in or around and dislodge his base in order to make him put his hands on the ground, okay? Because if his hands are on me, it's gonna be really hard for me to triangle him. Better for armbar situation. But if I can make him put his hands on the ground, I can I can get to my triangle. Okay, so again, he's pinning me. Okay, and now I'm just gonna take both my hands, I'm gonna push his head one direction. Okay, this way, 
this way and I'm pushing above or on that ear line, the top of his ears. I don't wanna push down into the neck, I wanna push the top of the lever. I'm gonna go like this. Okay, and now you see my feet are in the air. I'm shrimping my hip out, but I am not putting my feet on the ground. Now he pushes back in, okay, push back in and redirect. Okay, don't slip off the head like I just did. Redirect, keep your arms nice and straight. Now he's in the perfect place for my clamp guard. Let's say do one more. He keeps coming back in, boom. See my feet stay up and I'm getting my hip further and further away from him. Now this is gonna be really easy to get to my clamp. I'm grabbing the head, I'm grabbing the wrist. Bottom foot is just gonna step on the hip here. Top leg comes up, crunch down, and then lock the heel to the knee. Now hands are pulling in, legs are pushing away. So we have that tension. Top leg pulls down, bottom leg lifts out, throw it over, shoulder walk, anchor, finish. Push back. Push back one more time. And you may not have to go that far, but if you do, you can. I'm under the leg this time, anchors me to that perpendicular angle very nicely, and finish. Okay, now the last one we're gonna do from the top. Super secret, that's why I'm sharing it with all of you. I just kind of figured this out very recently. I didn't make it up, this is a judo triangle. Um, but it's not something that I understood even a year ago. Okay, so first my setup, he's got his hands in good position. I'm not gonna waste all my energy trying to break him apart. I could also just punch him in the face, bang, 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 and then grab one and pin it. But if his hands are down like this, maybe you're doing this in a jiu-jitsu gym, I can also just go like this. I'm gonna handcuff him like that. I'm not trying to go rah and push his arms to the ground like that. I'm gonna do this. Rotate, I'm gonna turn, I uh, crunch my stomach, okay, so I, I crunch my stomach, and I push slightly with straight arms, just a little bit. And now there's a little bit of tension. So I'm pushing in, which actually kind of pushes me back into his hips a bit. Again, straight arms, core on, I'm using this mostly to push. And then he's gonna try to escape eventually, right? He's gonna try to bridge or something. Go ahead, yeah. As soon as he bridges that, one of those hands is gonna go to the mat. Now you can let go of the other one. Punch him a couple times in the face if you want. Okay, and now I'm gonna grab his head and I'm gonna lift it up. And I'm gonna slide my shin over that arm. I know a lot of people are thinking, why wouldn't you just do this? Because it's super awkward. He'll see it coming a mile away. Actually quite difficult. But doing this is very easy. Very easy for me to slide my shin over top of his arm. And now I'm gonna slide my femur across the back of his shoulders. So this thigh is gonna go all the way across, like that. You can see how my femur and his shoulders are in a parallel line. It's kinda like S mount right now. I wanna bring this foot up and put the back of this knee in the back of this armpit. Okay, so I'm gonna go pull and whoosh, like so. I'm trying to bring this knee pit into the armpit as tightly as I can. And now from here, he's in the pit of death already. I'm gonna grab my shin. I'm gonna start dismounting, okay? So I'm gonna roll this direction. Okay, now let's just angle a little bit. Boom, I grab my shin, I roll off. As I'm rolling off, I'm locking. Makes it very easy to lock. Now this is actually extremely tight, uh, small circle in the, in the in, or some small hole in your legs, in the, in the triangle. It's not a lot of space that you need. Okay, so I will try to choke up more than I would naturally. Usually I would just lock right here. Okay, but with this one I find I can lock a little higher. Have that tension and I lock as high as I can. Now he's gonna continue the roll, he's not gonna stop there. Okay, and now from here I'm projecting my hips forward. I'm gonna get on my head and my shoulder. And I'm gonna turn my knees slightly towards the ground. I don't wanna be sideways, I wanna be facing the ground. Okay, and now I'm gonna grab his, his tricep, okay, I'm grabbing his tricep, and I'm gonna squeeze my legs together like this. It's this motion. Okay, like this. This is my hip, this is a femur, this is a femur. I wanna do this. His head and his arm is in this hole. Here's the third side of the triangle. I wanna do this. If I can do that, he's toast. He's in there, right? So the closer I get those two femurs, he cut his head off. Okay, so yeah, we're in mount. Boom, 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 I'm doing damage. I start putting him under pressure. You could even do this with one arm, 
while you do damage with the other. Boom, he starts bridging. Yeah, it's just, it's just humor me and bridge the other way. Yeah, that's the only way the arm's gonna go down. So if you really wanna make sure that you're gonna get one of them isolated, Okay, then it's best to use two arms. Okay, and now he, he bridges, boom. And that one's gonna go down to the ground without you really having to do anything about it. Okay, now this arm is gonna grab his head and it's gonna pull it up. And now I'm sliding my femur behind him. Okay, so slide my shin over his arm and under the neck. Okay, you can see I'm not quite under. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a little adjustment. Hand's gonna come up here and I'm gonna go whoosh, like that, okay? Whoosh. And I'm trying to put my hips into his neck. Okay, the, the tighter connection I get to this side, the more likely I'm gonna have that, that carotid artery here right beside his esophagus blocked off. So I'm going whoosh, hips into the neck, okay? And now I'm gonna draw that half circle with this foot, okay? Whoosh, like that. You can put a little tension on this tricep so you make sure he doesn't get that arm down and whoosh, and now we can grab. We're just gonna adjust, okay? Now I grab and I roll to my shoulder. I lock. Don't let him keep roll rotating ahead of you. Follow him. So you can see I'm really beside him here. I'm not behind him. I'm definitely not underneath him. I'm beside him. I lock that triangle. I can even choke up on it, you can see. And now I'm coming to a straight line like this. On my head and my shoulder, I turn my knees towards the ground and I elongate everything, okay, like that, okay, and it's that, like, think like head scissors, okay, head scissors, but really try to use a lot of your, your posterior chain, use a lot of your hamstrings and your glutes to kind of scissor, scissor your legs. It's much different than how you would finish a front triangle, very, very different. This is Yoko Senkaku, which is a, a judo triangle. As far as I know, that's where it comes from. I haven't seen any jits guys really doing this. Only judo females usually are the best at it. So that's three, three, three attacks you've got. Anybody tries to pin you down in the guard, you should always be shooting a triangle because they'll posture up and you can get to other movements. Now, if you're on top of the person, it is dangerous leaving the top. A lot of the times, the best submission from the top of the mount is to just punch and elbow the person in the face until the fight's finished. But it depends on the situation. What if you need a finish, right? What if you need to finish the person, they, you're down by two rounds already, you're in the third round, you're like two and a half minutes into the third round, you gotta win, right? And it, it's even, even more effective if you are like in a situation, in that same situation, but it's even later. So say it's like the last, last minute of the fight and you've lost most of it, okay? That's a great time to get off the top and arm bar. The situation also works in reverse. So if say I'm fighting and I'm whooping on this guy. I've got all the rounds in the books already. I'm, I'm winning every single round. It's the last round and it's the last like minute of the round. Now I could just ride it out try to get my ground and pound, get a, get a TKO or maybe get a decision, but there's also no real risk in me going to the bottom. If I have all the rounds in the books already and I've been dominating, I can jump off the top uh, and attack a submission. And if it goes to the, to, the, to, the, to the cards, then I'm still gonna win that decision. You gotta have those, those kind of tactics in mind when you're, whenever you're jumping off the top to do anything because there's always a risk. You don't want to end up on the bottom for a long period of time and give away a whole round unless the rounds don't really matter anymore and you need to finish. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, I hope that was helpful. And if you guys have any other uh, things that you want, that you're struggling with, that you want help with, drop a comment with it because I really like getting questions. It, it gives me a lot more uh, ability to make content that is going to suit you and really help you. Okay, thanks a lot. Peace.